Here we have a Polaroid, known for its unique colors and vintage charm. No matter if you use a camera from the 1970s or the latest Polaroid i2, with every photograph you create a unique physical object. But you can take it way further than that. With simple tools and the Polaroid camera, you are able to elevate your photograph from just a snapshot to a true piece of art. So let's get into creative ways of working with Polaroid photographs. I start by loading a new pack of film into my camera. I'm using an ASIC 70 here, but feel free to use any kind of Polaroid camera for the techniques I'm going to show in this video. However, be aware that only the first technique works with Instax cameras or film. I've organized these techniques by complexity, so definitely stick around to the end to see how to create the most intricate Polaroid artworks. But let's get going with the first technique, creating Polaroid panoramas. A technique that's as simple as powerful. By placing Polaroids next to each other, you can go beyond the frame of a single image. A great example for this technique is the collage by David Hockney. Here he shows with great skill how the whole can be more than just some of its parts. But you can go far beyond landscapes or the accurate representation of perspective. To demonstrate what I mean by that and show a bit more of the potential of this technique, I'm going to create a small panorama containing three images. A subject, I'm going to use this cheap hole violin. Now, you could obviously just take three top-down shots of the violin and call it a day, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I decided to take the three pictures from three different perspectives. The lower part of the body top-down, the neck at a slight angle, and a scroll from the side. And here are our three photographs. Now, when it comes to placement, you have a mere infinite number of possibilities. You could have them overlap, place them in a grid or place them completely freely. But I've decided to keep it quite simple and position them with a bit of space in between them. Seeing them laying on the table like that, I thought it might be quite nice to see what they might look like framed. I sadly could only find this nasty golden frame though, but it'll have to do. Before we look at the results though, let's get to the second technique. Creating Polaroid Transparencies. As the name suggests, this technique is about turning your Polaroids transparent. As mentioned before, this doesn't work with Instax film, and Polaroid color film won't work as well. The best option is to start with a fresh black and white Polaroid, not more than 10 minutes after it comes out the camera. This is important, so don't wait too long. Start by using a knife to cut off the edges. The less material you cut off, the more it will still look like a Polaroid later. When you have finished with the sides, cut open the bottom like this. There are only three steps left, so cut through those black pieces of tape to keep going. Now comes the tricky part, separating the front from the back. Do that by bending the front and very, very slowly separate the front. The only thing left to do is to cut off the back. Now, you might have little stains of chemicals on the transparency. This might be because you waited too long after exposing, used expired film or separated the halves too quickly. But don't worry, 
with a knife and some damn towel or q-tip, you are able to remove them quite well. Now, you might ask what to do with these transparencies. The possibilities are again endless, so let me show you what I came up with. First, I tried to put some coloured paper behind the image, and even try to combine different kinds of paper. Although this changed the look and feel of the transparency quite a bit, I decided to try something different. The second thing I tried was to combine multiple transparencies by sticking them to some poster board. I used a LED panel to backlight the whole thing. And even though I did like the three-dimensional character of the piece, I chose to experiment a bit more. So I brought out the little light panel again. Put the Polaroid and some paper on it, and trace the outline of the wireless. That way I was able to paint on the paper knowing exactly where everything would be positioned later. After some experimentation I came up with something I was satisfied. I'll again show the results at the end, so let's continue with technique number 3. The Polaroid Lift. This technique is all about lifting a Polaroid to another surface. The surface can be wood or paper or whatever you can think of that doesn't dissolve in water. You start with a transparency like the one I talked about in the last technique. You can also do this with color film, but be aware that the transparency won't be transparent, but opaque. So the structure of the material you choose to put your lift on might not be as visible. Start by cutting off the frame of the transparency using a knife or a pair of scissors. After that, you put the Polaroid into some warm water. For black and white film, I like to use 40 degrees Celsius, and for color film, I like to use 80 degrees Celsius water. After a few seconds, we'll see the image wrinkle. Use a soft brush and your fingers to separate the image from the plastic. You can throw away the plastic part and you are left with your image floating in water. You now want to bring your material under the floating image. I've decided to use watercolor paper here, but again, you can go with whatever you choose. Fixing the image to the paper is a bit tricky though. The easiest way is to start with the edges and then try to get everything straight, is merging only the parts in the water that are still crooked. When everything is situated the way you want, you can put away your image to dry. In retrospect, I think I should have placed the Polaroid less perfect than the paper. That way, the organic shapes produced by the lift would have been a nice contrast to the straight neck of the violin. But that's something for another time. Before we finish this video, I have one little bonus idea left. Using a Polaroid for cyanotype printing. Because after producing a Polaroid transparency, it's just one more step to turn that into a cyanotype print. The only thing you have to do is to place the transparency on some coated paper. I used some glass and weights to squeeze everything together. Expose the whole thing and develop it in tap water. Now, before we get to the final reveal, if you like this video so far, maybe consider liking or subscribing. Speaking of the final reveal, that's it. Four techniques and a whole pack of Polaroid film later, here are the pieces I produced today. And I think they turned out rather nicely. My favorite has to be the cyanotype, but that might just be me. Let me know in the comments which piece you like most.
Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe found something interesting or inspiring. As always, I want to encourage you to run wild with these ideas. No matter if you use only one of them or combine them to something completely new. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments. Until then, see you next week.